Welcome back to the course of uh, crystallography. In the previous lecture, we were talking about the atomic scattering factor F, which we defined as the ratio of the amplitude of scattered radiation by an atom divided by the amplitude of scattered X-ray by a single electron. And then we understood the variation of atomic scattering factor with sin theta by lambda for different nuclei and we indicated that the scattering factor or scattering power of an element reduces drastically with the increase in the scattering angle theta. So, with sin theta by lambda the scattering power of every element reduces very significantly as a result at a higher angle we do not get a very strong diffraction from many most of the crystals. And also we indicated that for light elements as we have shown here, the scattering power is very less and heavier the element, we have stronger and stronger diffraction capability from those elements. So now we will try to see what do we mean by structure factor a new term. See when we have a set of scattering centers, set of atoms within the unit cell following a particular symmetry, then the scattering from each one of those atoms located at different sites, that is different values of xi, yi, zi, how that those elements are scattering and how one can sum, sum up those scattering amplitudes to understand the intensity that is coming up from one particular lattice plane. So what we are trying to do is the scattering amplitude of an unit cell is calculated by summing up of all the scattering amplitudes that is the F from all the scattering centers which are atoms or ions for each and every plane that one can consider in the crystal. The summation must include the path difference between the scattered waves. The summation must include the path or phase difference between the scattered waves. So the structure factor which is represented by the uppercase letter F with suffix HKL is mathematically expressed as the ratio of amplitude scattered by all the atoms present in the unit cell by amplitude scattered by an electron. FHKL does not only represent the amplitude of scattering but also includes the phase angle of the scattered wave. This phase angle is important. We will come to this discussion at a later stage today. FHKL, the structure factor is just not a simple number. It represents a vector and in mathematical terms it represents a complex number. So let us see what do we understand by the structure factor. Suppose we have Suppose we have two scattering centers on two parallel planes, I designate them in black and the distance between the these two parallel planes is nothing but dhkl. Here if we now consider the X-ray diffraction that is we have incident beam falling on this point and getting scattered. This is the incident beam that is the diffracted beam. 
it is going in the direction theta and the same for the other atom scattering at a different location which is again theta and theta and the atomic scattering factor for those atoms are same because they are identical atoms. So, the same can happen for the plane which is just below this with the same angle of incidence and diffraction and these atoms are all same having atomic scattering factor F0. So, if we consider a primitive lattice, of one type of atoms then the situation which I have drawn is justified. So, then when we have only one type of atom the corresponding structure factor F H K L is nothing but the atomic scattering factor F0 because all the atoms are located at origin. In case of primitive lattice, you have 8 atoms located at 8 corners of the unit cell and all of them being the same. The summation is nothing but it is the atomic scattering factor of F0. So, now if we have two different scatterers which now I am going to draw below. Suppose you have one set of scatterers on this plane and the other set of scatterers present in a plane just above it then if you consider the atom positions like before where we have one atom here the same kind is present at a distance here and a different atom the second type of atom is located at this point and this point with respect to the first. So, then when the diffraction is considered the incident beam gets diffracted like this and simultaneously the incident beam gets diffracted like this for the second type of atom as well. So, now if this angle is theta, this is also theta and now we try to drop perpendicular from the atom point here and we drop a perpendicular from there and the paths A C and B D are to be considered. So, we have the unit vector like before S0 and S going like that. So, now we can think of that the scatterer here is scattering factor F0 scatterer there is F1 and the unit vector from F0 to F1 is nothing but R1. So, the position vector R1 is equal to x1a plus y1b 
plus z1 c. So now if we try to calculate the path difference between the two scattered waves from the <coughs> atom located at A with scattering factor F0 and atom located at B with scattering factor F1. <coughs> the path difference, <coughs> the path difference is AB minus CD and which means AB equal to R1 S minus R1 dot S minus R1 dot S0 which means it is equal to R1 dot S minus S0 as before. S and S0 are unit vectors in the direction of in diffracted beam and the incident beam. So now the difference here is nothing but hx1 plus ky1 plus lz1 which is equal to sorry multiplied by dhkl which is equal to the component of r1 perpendicular to the reflecting plane that is the plane hkl so now as we know this s minus s0 can be written as lambda d square d star hkl so we can write r1 lambda d star hkl which is equal to r1 dot lambda ha star plus kb star plus lc star. So now one can rewrite the path difference. We can rewrite the path difference as we replace R1 by x1a, y1b, z1c and take a dot product with h a star plus k b star plus l c star into lambda which is equal to lambda h x1 plus k y1 plus l z1 as a dot a star is 1 and a dot b star is equal to 0. So the path difference is now integral multiple of lambda times 
the component of the R1 along the perpendicular direction of HKL plane. So now considering a vector phase diagram where the length of the vectors are proportional to the atomic scattering factors. So we consider a vector phase We consider a vector space diagram where the length of the vectors are proportional to the atomic scattering factors and the phase difference or phase angle rather, the rocket phase angle phi 1 between the incident and diffracted beam we can write the phase angle phi is equal to 2 pi by lambda into the component which is lambda hx1 plus ky1 plus lz1 which is nothing but 2 pi hx1 plus ky1 plus lz1. So, this is the case with two scatterers, two atomic scatterers present in the lattice. So, now if we consider that we have a multiple scatterers. then what can we draw? We can draw the following figure. Suppose for a scatterer located here, the atomic scattering is in this direction and we write it as F0. From the next scatterer located here, it makes a phase angle of phi 1 and we cut it here, the next atom scatters in this direction as F2 making an angle phi 2 and the next scatterer is scattering in this direction F3 with an angle phi 3. So, the overall scattering from the origin is the sum of all these scatterings which we write as F H K L the structure factor. So, here we are summing up all scatterings F1, F2, F3 and so on in slowly changing scattering angle phi. Then we need to do a sum up of all these scatterings to get the 
value for the scattering factor FHKL. So this sum up is not simple summing up of numbers. Instead of adding these vectors graphically, we add it using the argon diagram of complex numbers. So we add these scatterings F0, F1 up to Fn using argon diagram of complex numbers. So this sum can be written as F H K L is equal to sum over n equal to 0 to n f n e to the power 2 pi i h x plus k y plus l z. This is the expression for the structure factor present structure factor computed for a multi atomic system in a crystal structure. Let us see how one can calculate the structure factor for multi electronic systems. So let us take the example of cesium chloride. In this case, as we have already discussed, the chloride ions are located at 0, 0, 0 and cesium ions are located at half, half, half. We write the corresponding atomic scattering factors as FCL and FCS. So if we try to calculate the scattering factor FHKL for this simple cubic structure, we write the sum as FCL exponential 2 pi i HX KY plus LZ. Remember this x, y and z are zeros here plus fcs exponential 2 pi i h into half k into half plus l into half that is the atomic coordinates of cesium. So now the exponential term at the beginning, the, in the first term is e to the power 0 is 1. So it is nothing but FCL plus FCS e to the power or exponential 2 gets cancelled in inside and outside. So it is pi i h plus k plus l. So now for different values of h, k and l, if we have h plus k plus l equal to even number, that means a to the power 2 pi i even number is equal to 1 which then indicates that structure factor F H K L is nothing but F C L plus F C S. If this sum H plus K plus L is odd, 
So in that case, exponential 2 pi, sorry, exponential pi i exponential pi i odd number is equal to minus 1 which indicates the structure factor comes down to h k l f h k l is equal to f c l minus f c s. Now let us consider a situation where a crystal has a center of inversion. So, we consider a crystal with i and we assume that this i is at the origin. So, if we have atoms at x, y and z, then we should have another atom at x bar, y bar and z bar. So now if we try to calculate the value of FHKL, what do we get? We have F Remember the two atoms at x, y, z and x bar, y bar, z bar are same. So we write the atomic scattering factor as f0 for both of them exponential 2 pi i hx plus ky plus lz plus f0 exponential 2 pi i minus hx minus k y minus l z. Which means it is equal to f 0 exponential 2 pi i h x plus k y plus l z plus f 0 exponential 2 pi i with a minus sign h x plus k y plus l z. On expanding these two terms in terms of cos and sine and simplifying one can get 2 f 0 cos 2 pi h x plus k y plus l z. So, in case of centrosymmetric structure, the sign terms have disappeared. So, for a centrosymmetric structure, what we see is that the structure factor f h k l is only represented by a cos term. So, in this lecture, we have discussed about the scattering factors, we have talked about the structure factors, how the structure factors can be calculated for different systems and I have covered these two lectures, the previous one and this one from the textbook of Hammond, the extra crystallography book by Hammond in chapter 8 and 9. So, I would like you to go through these two chapters then it will be clearer to you. So, in the next class we will continue to work with the structure factor expressions and we will learn how to derive the systematic absence conditions from structure factors.